Hello, welcome to this lock-on tutorial in the A10. If you've watched the introductory ground attack flight tutorial, then you'll know I mentioned I'll be doing a series of basic, and then later more advanced, tutorials for lock-on, starting with cockpit orientation. We'll be flying the A10 primarily. It's both easy and fun to fly, and a great place to learn the basics. Plus, a lot of what you learn in the A10 can be carried across to the F-15C, or any other aircraft you may wish to fly later on. Later tutorials will have us moving to fast jets. I should mention here that Lock-On does have a training section from the main menu. Unless you have the flaming cliffs expansion installed though, they won't have voiceover. Sometimes it's helpful to have somebody telling you and showing you the functions of the aircraft whilst you can concentrate on what's going on, as opposed to attempting to follow a large block of text, as well as focus on what's happening. This tutorial covers cockpit orientation. The main dials and gauges in the cockpit and also the features of the heads-up display, or HUD. OK, let's get started. We're currently sat with our engines spooling up in the parking area of our home airbase. I'll bring the canopy down so it's not too noisy in here. There we go. When you first sit in the cockpit, it can be a little daunting with all these dials and gauges to decipher, but you'll actually only be using about five of them for 90% of the time you fly. And the first we'll be looking at is the Attitude Indicator, or ADI. This instrument acts as an artificial horizon and allows you to see your situation relative to outside when you cannot see beyond the cockpit. As you pitch and bank, the ADI will show your position relative to the horizon. This marker currently centred on the ADI represents our aircraft. This point here represents your nose, with the wings extending either side. Along the base of the instrument, notice these tick marks. They show your current bank in increments of 10 degrees up to a bank of 30 degrees. A little further round is the tick mark indicating 60 degrees, and finally the tick mark indicating 90 degrees of bank. These tick marks running at the centre of the ADI indicate your pitch up or down in 5 and 10 degree increments. The shorter marks indicate 5 degrees, while the longer marks indicate 10 degrees. The white portion of the ADI indicates pitch up attitude, whilst the black area shows that you are pitching downwards. The ADI is also used in an ILS, or Instrument Landing System, approach. We won't go into that now, as there's quite a lot to talk about there, and it will be covered in a later ILS tutorial. Below the ADI is the Horizontal Situation Indicator, or HSI. This is used for navigation, and represents a top-down view of our aircraft superimposed on a compass. The heading you are currently flying is always located at the top, the HSI also displays information relating to your next waypoint, specifically the heading you need to fly to reach it. The course line you should be flying, and how far to the right or left of that course line you are, is displayed here. Here we can see a numeric heading to our next waypoint, and the distance to it in miles. I'll be showing you how to interpret and follow a specific set of waypoints using the HSI as part of the navigation tutorial. The ADI and HSI are the two instruments you'll be using most to get from A to, A to B. With these two instruments, you could get home if something went horribly wrong during the mission. That's assuming you weren't missing wings, nor engines. To the right of the ADI is the Vertical Speed Indicator, or VSI. This displays your descent or ascent rate in metres per second. It is currently at zero, as you are obviously neither ascending or descending. The needle will, would rotate clockwise if we were ascending, and counterclockwise if we were descending. Below the VSI is the altimeter. It shows your current altitude above sea level, not land level. If you fly into the side of a mountain because you thought you were flying a thousand feet above the land, don't blame me. The numbers around this dial represent hundreds of feet. As you climb, the needle will continually rotate around the dial. The centre number represents your height in thousands of feet. Over on the left of the ADI is the radar warning receiver, or RWR, pronounced RAW. This indicates what radar signals are in the area. The centre point of the dial represents your aircraft, and the stronger the signal, the closer it will appear to the centre. We'll look more at interpreting the RAW and its symbology in later tutorials, so we won't go over it too much now. Just below the RA is your airspeed indicator in knots. Each number on the dial represents 100 knots, with the centre dial used for tens of knots. So if the needle were pointing to the 1 on the dial, and the centre dial was pointing to 50, our indicated airspeed would be 150 knots. 
On the far left here, we have the flaps indicator, which shows the degree of flaps you currently have engaged. Right now, it's 0 degrees, indicating flaps are in. Now 15 degrees, which is the takeoff position. And now full 30 degrees, which is the landing position. And back to zero. Just below the flaps gauge is the air brake indicator, displaying the degree of air brakes you have engaged. Above these two gauges is the gear indicator, which indicates what position your landing gear are currently in. Three green lights mean all three wheels are down and locked. If these lights are off, your gear are up. If they are they're flashing, it indicates that your gear are either coming up or being extended. Over here on the far right is your remaining fuel gauge. Fuel is displayed in pounds. OK, let's take a quick look at the A10's heads up display, or HUD. The HUD has various modes for navigation, weapon, weapons usage and landing. Most of the time you'll be using the navigation mode, and the HUD displays vital information such as speed and altitude and waypoint information and direction. Again, we'll be taking a look at each HUD mode as we use it in later tutorials, and I don't particularly want to bombard you with too much information right now. That concludes basic cockpit orientation. Obviously, various elements of the cockpit, certain dials, such as the radar warning receiver and the HUD, will be gone over in far greater detail as we use them in later tutorials. Thank you for watching this tutorial. The next tutorial will be on the correct startup, taxiing, and takeoff procedure. If you would like to join me on that tutorial, I've provided a link in the description box below. It's been my pleasure.